Okay. Fire away. Uh, Matt was actually just saying was that uh, George said it's going to start getting more involved. You know, he had the uh, 22-yard catch the other day or yeah. I guess last week or whatever. Um, but I guess in that same vein, how is that starting to you know play out as far as you know, bringing him? Along? I know we talked about it a lot. It feels like, but um, yeah, just kind of how's that going on as far as about Jordan? Him? Yeah. Yeah, I think Jordan's shown that he can uh, make some plays when he gets the opportunity. I think, you know, you get into a situation where you got some older players, um, you know, Nate and those guys and Kobe that kind of played in front of him. That's the only thing that's limited his uh, reps. But he's improved. I know early on in fall camp uh, he got banged up a little bit, so he was kind of slow starting the season. But I think you'll see him uh, get more involved as the season goes. And, um, you know, he's shown that. He made a couple big catches, I know, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, uh, a couple weeks ago with Georgia Tech. So we really like him. I think his future is really bright here. And, you know, um, you know, it's one of those things, too, where I don't think the moment's ever too big for him. He's pretty mature for a freshman. I think that's a huge part of playing early is, is you know, having that confidence. And, and uh, he's shown that he does have that and uh, excited about him for sure. What, what was the chief emphasis in the offensively? Yeah, I think – you know, we were really, you know, first of all, getting healthy. You know, this time of year you play um, seven weeks and, you know, until you have a bye week. So that's it's been good from that standpoint. Uh, we did a lot of getting our young guys reps that the Jordan Ships of the world and, and those younger guys that are, have played some or spot played us some, um, you know, with some injuries here and there. But I think for us, you know, we're still, you know, trying to focus on the fundamental things, you know, of, of being consistent and protecting the ball, which we've done a, a better job of uh, lately. Um, you know, no self-inflicted wounds, so to speak, no, no pre-snap penalties, none of that, and, and really kind of just old-fashioned roll up your sleeves, go to work, and have three really good days of practice, and that was, our, that was our goal. I think that was the key. And also get a head start on Virginia. I think you always want to do that, but, you know, and, and I think from a coordinator standpoint, you're trying to look, okay, Virginia, um, this is kind of who they are and what they look like, and what do we have that's uh, – Kind of our base base offense that we can work on this week, blocking and tackling and executing, and that's kind of what we did in those three days. And then our older guys, some of those guys, got a chance to I think uh, heal up a little bit, and uh, we took some reps off those guys. As you look at the last three games, Amari, aside from that seventy-one yard run, mm -hmm. hasn't had many explosives, mm -hmm. and I think there's twenty-seven runs of one yard or less. Mm -hmm. I just asked Mac about it. He was talking about the. The injuries not banged up the line has been, and, and you know, uh, Randy not being available. What would you attribute that to the last few weeks? And do you think yeah. the open period with getting healthier, maybe you're going to see something? Yeah, I think more? I think all of it contributes. Probably, I would say. I would say that um, you know, he's by far the guy that that I'm sure that everybody when we play, they say, hey, we got to do whatever we do to stop him, which is I think allowed Jacoby to make some plays down the field, but. I think too. I think when you look at different, you know, O line play is so. Um, you know, they have to kind of get their, their rhythm together, right? They have to kind of play beside each other. And I think some of that is probably when you throw a couple young guys in there with Aiden being banged up and so forth. But at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, we've got to do a better job of, of, of making sure that our first and second down plays don't leave us second long, third long. And I think that's what we really tried to work on the past week. Um, you know, he, you know Omarion's one of those guys that, that he's going to draw a lot of attention. So we got to figure out the best way each week, I think, to take advantage of that. And that's helped us open up some passes down the field for sure, play fakes and so forth. But uh, I think getting that, that continuity back with our O-line, hopefully that's going to help us. Well, we've seen the last two games where, how you can use Jacoby in that sense. So yeah. quarterback draws and yep. he falls forward. Yeah. Uh, how much can, can you use that moving forward to maybe yeah. also help them, Mario, because they have to be worried more just not one guy. But yeah, I think you're right. Too. I think that, that's a huge thing when a quarterback has some mobility. Uh, been spoiled around here with the last two guys before him that both could make plays with their feet. And Jacoby uh, did a nice job of that last couple of weeks um, on, some, on some design stuff and then some stuff that wasn't designed. You know, when the pass protection uh, or they cover, or the pass pro breaks down, he's done a nice job. And really what I like is that he's not taking a lot of sacks. He's throwing the ball away when he should. And he's gotten down on the ground and tried to avoid big hits as much as he can. That's what you worry about some. But uh, he's a, I think he's a lot better athlete than people gave him credit for. Uh, he's... Uh, you know, he's a, he's a guy at this time of year that they're all banged up a little bit, and I'm sure he is, but this, this bye week could have come at a better time. Chip, with uh, Bryson and Julie both being out this week and potentially longer, who do you see <laughs> stepping up in sort of the second tight end role behind Cope? Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit by committee. I think this is a, uh, a big week for Jake. I think, you know, 
well, obviously he, he's a guy that's older and has played some, um, and he's played a little here and there for us. But I think I think Jake brings some some confidence and some stability in that room for sure, especially when we want to be in 12 personnel or just to rest coach some. I think that's huge. Um, I think Ryan's another guy that, that you know could could fill in some too as a true freshman. Um, we know he's going to be a really, really good player. He's really talented, but his lep, uh, reps have been limited just because of some older guys in front. But, uh, you know, I think I think those two guys will have to fill that void in some capacity. It's going to be really hard. Bryson's a, a fabulous player and uh, really brings a lot to the table. But I think we're going to have ways, maybe with some unique personnel groups, to hopefully offset that some. Might be a, a silver lining to view this as sort of a preview of next year when Bryson is potentially off to the NFL, right? Well, maybe, but we're trying to win every game this year. So, so uh, I don't know about silver lining. Anytime you lose one of the best players in the country, in my mind, that's just not a not a lot of not a not an exciting thing. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm very confident in Jake, very confident in Ryan. I think those are some opportunities now that they'll get. I was just going to ask Bryson was in until the very last play of the game. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you guys are When did he get injured? In the game? Yeah, it was early. Uh, you know, testament to him. He's tough. I mean, he he played. Uh, Basically, from what I can understand, the whole game, you know, um, really with the injury, and um, so you know, a testament to how tough he is and how much he wants to be on the field. And uh, you know, I think I think it's one of those things that it's just going to take a little time to heal. I don't, no, not specifically. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that was it, and, and um, I, I'm not sure, sure exactly yeah. what play. It's been a while, so. Chip, I know you were saying you. You yeah. feel like Jacoby's done a pretty good job of not taking snaps. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it seems like he's taking a lot of shots in the movies. Yeah. But he hangs in there, and he doesn't yeah. flinch from getting hit no, in terms no. of hanging there to deliver the ball. Yep. I mean, I would think these last five games you want to try to keep him sure. cleaner than you can. Is that, I mean, is that one of the big concerns of yeah. him is that he's taking too much? Definitely. I don't want him to get hit ever. But if you look, if you watch the game, whatever level, they're, those guys are going to get hits on them. I mean, that's yeah. part of it. But uh, we got to do our – our job to limit how many times and uh, you know there's a lot of things that go into that sometimes the ball should have come out and it didn't sometimes we get beat uh, at a certain spot whether it's running back or o-line and, and sometimes they they uh, fool, fool us and bring more than we than we thought they were bringing or whatever the case may be and that's why the quarterback is so important for him to be able to operate and change the protections and, and you know get them slid the right way and all those different things that go along with it and he's dramatically improved in that as, as, mu as much as he uh, could because now he's just played more, so he's got more reps, and I think that goes, that's part of the growing experience of, you know, when you get young quarterbacks. If you think about the the fresh, not the freshmen, but the rookies in the NFL this year, Drake being one of them, and those are the things that concern those guys at that level as well. Do we really want to expose this guy that early, and you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience, and it's the same way in college. I think uh, when you have young quarterbacks, that's important. Um, and again, you know. Um, Maybe the common fan or whatever wants to blame, hey, it's the old line's fault. That's not always true. And, um, it, it, you know, it takes the whole unit working together. And that's, the, I think, the beauty about football is um, it's never just – it's a team game. And uh, we all contribute to that. And uh, so hopefully that will improve. Um, I think there's times, too, that, that we have to throw the ball away. Understand the play's over, throw it away, move on, play the next one. Sometimes those are the best plays you can make. Hey, we called a certain play. They – we didn't get the look that we thought we were getting, so it's it's not a good look, so let's throw it away and go play the next play. And all those things are learning experiences for him. Matt, just to follow up on that real yep. quick, are those, when you guys are going through the film, are those sort of the conversations, I mean, I'm sure you're talking about everything, mm -hmm. but like, there are there moments that you're pointing out, hey, you might not, you didn't have to take this shot. That's oh, yeah, tough. yeah, definitely. Like, you point, like actually yeah. pointing that out? Every, every year, I mean, last year with Drake, it was, hey, don't jump the guy, right? right. Run out of bounds, <laughs> uh, slide, whatever. I mean, same conversations. And, you know, what's fun about these guys, they're smart guys. And as soon as, I mean, they'll watch the film before they meet with me. And I'll get to it and, oh, I should have, you know, whatever. So they, they understand. But, again, understanding, drawing it on a board, talking through it, and then doing it when the play snap, it's a, lot, it's a totally different thing. The speed of the game's fast. And, uh, it's a lot to process, and uh, again, experience is a huge factor, and uh, he's gaining that experience for sure. And I think you've seen his growth if you really sit down and, and look and study, you know, what he's done since he's been thrown into this role here and, and become our starter. I think you've seen him grow in that area for sure. Mac was talking about all the injuries that the offensive line has had to deal with throughout this early part of the season, plus with Coach Clements uh, being out uh, for a period of time. 
Does it feel like after the bye, with a lot of those guys getting healthy, Glasky and Banfield, that mm -hmm. you, you sort of feel like, okay, now, like, here we go. Like, this is what it's Yeah, I mean, I think like. those are things that come up in every season. And, you know, we got we to handle those things and figure ways to, no matter who's available and what, what's going on, it's our job to figure out how to, how to move the ball and score points. And times we've done that, times we haven't. So, uh, but, you know, no excuses for us. Um, we are glad the bye week came when it did, don't get me wrong, because I think that'll help us uh, get some guys maybe more healthy. But at the end of the day, um, we got when the guys that are on the field, we got a lot of confidence in them. And uh, we, you know, we, we, we practice those guys and, and anticipate them playing well each and every week. And it's always good to have some guys back and some more depth for sure. But, um, you know, I think we got to figure ways to, to use the guys we have. And uh, I think we'll be as healthy as we've been, with, obviously with the exception of Bryson. Uh, going into this Virginia game. In your past, I was going to say, in your past coaching experience, mm -hmm. have you been through a depth of a player on the team and how did you? Uh, you know, I have. I, um, you know, a little little different scenario. Philip Lutzenkirk, and I've coached him in high school as a tight end, played that signed at Auburn and uh, played at Auburn, was a, was a great player at Auburn. And uh, very close to him and his family. He was, dad was my Booster Club president. He's got three, he had three sisters and they babysat my kids, so very close. and. Uh, lost him in 2014 in a in a car wreck, so a little different uh, circumstance from from uh, Tyler's obviously, but yeah, it's tough. And uh, you know, I thought Coach Coach Brown and Lonnie both, you know, just handled themselves uh, exceptionally well for that situation. And I know it's really hard. I've had to do that. And uh, anytime you do that, it's it's something that weighs on you for a long time. And uh, you know, young people, you losing young people early in their life is is really sometimes hard to understand. And uh, you know, I know our team has, has been a tough week on those guys um, and, and, our, and everybody in our program, but I do think, um, you know, it's something that, that we can all learn from, from his example. And uh, Coach made that point yesterday as well as Lonnie, and um, I think he's had a huge impact on, on the Carolina family. And just on that note, I mean, you know, you're trying to lead your <clears throat> offense through, you know, prep for the mm -hmm. game the rest of the season, but you're also leading a lot of these young folks through mm -hmm. processing this grief that maybe the yeah. first time a lot of them have kind of gone through something like this. Just Coach Brown was talking about that, but what's that been like? Yeah, I mean, that's really what we're here for, to help them grow as people and, and, and young adults and um, become, um, you know, become, you know, successful in life and uh, mostly um, <laughs> career-wise and all those things. And I think um, that's not been lost here, you know, uh, even since I arrived two years ago. That's been our focus. Coach Brown's focus is to uh, to really be a great positive influence on these young people in their lives, and that's what we've really always tried to do and have done. And um, so I think I think some people handle things differently uh, from the standpoint of how they process things. We all do, and you have to respect that. And you know, I think the big thing for us as coaches is just be there for our players in whatever capacity they they want us to be there and uh, help them. Help them understand it because uh, this is real life, and uh, you know, football games are, are always going to be here, and we want to win every game we play. But I think preparing them for life is kind of the number one thing we're here for. What are some of the primary challenges that UVA presents? Offensively? Yeah, I, I think with the very, very coach very well, um, very familiar. They're very sound in what they do defensively. Uh, you know, you know they have a really a really fantastic linebacker, um, and really two of them, and a couple of really good D linemen, and. It's not going to be a matter of of, um, of hey, you know, they're, they're giving you a bunch of crazy looks. I don't think, and they could. But at the end of the day, it's going to be about us executing. We've said that, and really being consistent. And that's something we struggle with. Some, you know, is being consistent and playing four quarters. We made some strides, I thought, last last two weeks ago, last time we played. But uh, at the end of the day, this is a good football team. They're very well coached. Um, their their record is, I think, four and three now, and so they they've won they've won some games and, and done a nice job. And, so for us, I think it's going to come down to taking care of the football and really, you know, no self-inflicted. We can't have, you know, false starts and penalties and so forth and uh, take advantage of every opportunity we get in the red zone. Chip, as, as you guys have gotten more and more into the league, do you find that, I understand the size of your tackles, your offensive tackles, mm -hmm. is, you know, great, textbook type size, but do you think teams have been able to use that or exploit that in terms of like some of the quick the quickness stuff off the edges. Like, it seems like those guys yeah. maybe have gotten confused at some times. No, I don't think so. I think it depends on, you know, 
you know, what, what position the player was outside or whatever, because it's all um, coordinated, right? Who blocked who and so forth. But no, I think our guys are just continuing to grow. I think those two tackles we have, they're, they're big guys and long and so forth. But at the end of the day, they are young players and they're, they're trying to figure it out as we go and making progress. I think uh, you look at Howard, I thought he played one of his best games uh, two weeks ago against Georgia Tech. The last two, actually, he's improved tremendously. Uh, there's always a you know player two you'd like to have back, but I like his progress. So I mean, he's a young sophomore as well as Trey, and both those guys are are improving each and every week. All right. This man yeah, Scott Barlow does seem to be as healthy as family. Yeah. Give you what you wanted to do. Yeah, I think so. Is. I think so. I mean, I think I think uh, Bullets Davion Goss has done a really nice job filling in spots, but you do have an older guy there that's played some that you got probably a little confidence that he's been in some games. He understands and. Getting him back, I think, is huge. Uh, I know he was, uh, uh, you know, back last time we played, and, and uh, you know, was kind of just getting back. But we, he's had a good week, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll see him uh, get some opportunities. All right, all right, all right. Thank you.